The political situation of the time was not safe for a number of students to pursue their dreams. This made it a priority for him to first stabilize the country, a struggle he was actively engaged in. Independence for Uganda, for the people of Uganda, was sacrificed at the altar of opportunism. Hailing from Mitoma district in western Uganda, Major General Kahinda Otafire attended Bubagizi Primary School before Mutole the primary and later Bushoroza, from where he completed primary eight. Then I went to Kitabi Seminary for one year and uh, I disagreed with um, the people who were teaching me over quite a number of issues, so I was advised to leave the school. He opted for what he describes as self-education after disagreeing with some of the teachings. But why? For instance, we were being taught the European history, and I found it very interesting that I should be taught about what happened in Europe and not what happened in Africa. Uh, there are quite a lot of things I... I will write a letter about later on that I didn't agree with. Uh, questions of religion. There were many answers, uh, questions unanswered. Which I asked, uh, because I was in a seminary, there were quite a lot of things I wanted to know. He would sit for mature entry examinations, which he passed and joined Makerere University, from where he pursued political science and public administration. While at Makerere, he was involved in anti Idi Amin politics, successfully participating in the ouster of the dictator. Idi Amin at that time was not alone. There were quite a lot of things going wrong. You know, because of what Idi Amin was, was doing, we were forced to even to look at the greater Africa uh, and it dwelled upon us, dwelled upon us that the liberating Uganda was not complete, was not enough without. Liberating Africa. But when he thought the dictator was gone, the country's stability was still far from being achieved. This is why he had every reason to believe that Uganda's liberation struggle was not yet complete. Hence, the 1981 Bush war struggle that culminated into Obote out of power. And when the 1979 war ended, the subsequent events clearly showed that the question of liberating Uganda had not been resolved. Quite a lot of things left, were left undone. You could clearly see that the politics were not going to be stable. So in my mind, in my mind, I realized we were going to have to fight again. It was not by choice that the NRA Bush war struggle took long. It was because of the urge to create capacity to lead in the event of taking power. We had to prepare cadres, we had to prepare this, we had to prepare that, we had to get weapons, we had to get, to, to get weapons and get sufficient strength, not only to take over the straight state, but also to maintain the state and stabilize the country. And that doesn't take a short time. Because if you had hurried, yes, you can take Kampala, but have you good capacity to control the whole country? Indeed, with such strategy, the National Resistance Movement took over power in 1986. This marked a new chapter in the political, social and economic spheres of life in Uganda. I, Uganda had become a failed state. Uganda was a failed state. So we had to clear this mess and reconstitute the state and uh, bring sanity in government and we had to bring to include everybody we decided a strategy of including everybody who had something to contribute in the rebuilding in the process of rebuilding the state once again i kahindo tafire 
so that I would be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Republic of Uganda. And I'll preserve General Otafire has since served in various ministerial dockets, including local government, internal affairs, regional cooperation, lands, trade, tourism, and industry. I became a military assistant to the president, and uh, then I, I served as a... I went back to training in the, the army to finish my training. From there, I became uh, Director General External Security and subsequently the Minister for Security. It was from the Justice and Constitutional Affairs Ministry that he took over East African community from the late Ari Kirunda Kive Jinja. In advance, you all know all these things. Here, he is bent on leading East African nations towards an agreed-upon federation for economic development. Because the federation solves our security problem, solves our defense problem, unites our economies, solves the matters of shortages, you know, you know, shortages and, uh, you know, inabilities. Uh, because if there is a shortage of maize in Tanzania, in a federation you don't need permission to move maize from Tanzania to cross the borders. If there is a, you know, then you can plan production. It is a political and leadership journey that draws back to his days as a youth winger in the Uganda People's Congress. The journey has seen him observe how people in Uganda have been voting over the years. The voters don't vote for value. They don't vote issues. They vote cousins, they vote money, they vote religion, they vote uh, all sorts of variables which have nothing to do with the politics. Then you end up with, sometimes you end up with people who are equal to the job, MPs. Sometimes you end up with councillors in parliament. People who should have remained at uh, LC3 council end up in parliament. Indeed, it is a journey that has not been a walk in the park with the challenges registered almost in all spheres. But how has he overcome this? This, among other questions, will be answered in our next episode of General Kahinda Otafire. Henry Okrut, UBC.